Okay, I'm back. Um, if you're paying attention to the timer changing, I was gone for a little longer than I planned on being gone. But, uh, and a, somebody chimed in MSN and I talked to them for a little while. So, um, where was I? Okay, uh, for picture two... Uh, yeah, this is for the sprites. Okay, sorry. Uh, for picture two, we've got appearances flat, our redraw will be true, auto size is true, border style is none. I'm going to set visible equal to false. Oh, scale mode I've got to set. Because we don't want to see this, um, we're just having it store stuff. So let me see which one of these had sprites. This one, data four. <clears throat> so I select the whole thing, copy, paste that in there. Alright, simple enough. Uh, let's open up the code. I'm going to use a lot of the I'm going to try to remember to use the same variable names that I used in the Pac-Man editor, at least as far as I can go, you know, where, they're, where they overlap. Um, this one's going to have a few different things in it than the other, um, than the Pac-Man editor. But I want to stay as close as possible so that, you know, it sinks in a little bit better so you understand why things work or how things work. Because if you're not comfortable with this code as you go through the tutorial, you'll never be able to really go back and change the code. So. I'm going to try to stay consistent here. So we'll say tile. That'll be the name of the two-dimensional array here. Uh, Width-wise, I don't know how wide this thing's going to be. I'm just going to throw in a number like a 1,000. Um, so this could be a very long map. You know, you figure Mario, you picture how long it takes you to run from one side to the other. So this could be really long. And then height, I'm just going to put 10. I'm not going to really make this big. Um, you can go through and, you know, change this however you want in the future. You can make this thing huge. You could make it so that um, you know it fills the entire screen horizontally. Enough for me. I have my screen resolution set so small right now that really, if I go any more than 10, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to fit it all on the screen at once, and that's going to run. I'm going to run into problems with that. So um, you guys, you know, can change this later. Let's say zero is sky. One is I'm going to say solid instead of wall because I'm going to walls and floor and everything, I'm going to handle all that the same. Two would be like a ladder. Um, I think that's probably all I need to do. And then, just like the Pac-Man game, we're going to have a tile A and a tile B, which is going to designate what coordinates on this sheet it's going to pull the graphic from. Because if you say, all right, I want it to be a wall or something solid, you could make it look like clouds if you want to. It's going to confuse the player, but you could do it. I mean, that's you could have sort of invisible walkways and stuff if you want, where they're actually clouds, you know, or it looks like sky, but if they try to stand on it, they can because it's actually a wall. Or you could have places where people fall through. Just make it look like whatever you want, as long as this number is set to either sky or solid or ladder. We are going to need... Let's see. Uh, we need our to for the editor to work. We need to be able to select tiles. So let's do the same thing we had with the last one. Selected A and selected B. Um, what else are we gonna need? Uh, let's just leave these for now. Uh, if you didn't already know from the other tutorials, I'm kind of making this up as I go. Um, I, it would make a lot more sense if I sat down, planned out exactly how to do each of these games, and then did the video and followed the steps. It'd be very organized. It would make a lot of sense and probably be a lot easier on me and you. But that means it's going to take me twice as long to do the videos because first I have to do the whole thing, then I have to redo the whole thing while recording it. And I'm kind of lazy. So if it seems scattered and I'm all over the place at times, it's because I really am scattered and all over the place. Um, the only planning that I've done on this is while I was drawing the sprites, I might think, oh, wait a minute, you know, I'm going to want there to be cliffs or something. I'm just coming up with something weird off the top of my head, and I'll draw a picture for it. So I kind of know that there's some feature that I'm going to want in the game because I drew a sprite for it, but other than that, I really haven't planned any of this out. Um, we're going to make a couple of functions, just like last time. Draw a screen... That's a normal one, and draw a tile. And this one we want to have Z and w, w. We're going to pass it to variables. What this will do, draw a screen is going to loop, and for every single tile that would be on the screen, it's going to call the draw a tile function 
and pass it the two variables. Um, there's a reason that you split these. It's nice to be able to draw the entire screen with a single call, and it's also nice to be able to draw individual tiles, especially if you need to erase the one, like just the one that the guy's standing on, so that you can draw them again in a different animation. Um, for drawing, oh, here we go. Let's go back up to form load. Let's just start the whole thing off. For z equals 1, 2, um, I don't know how wide the screen's going to be. I'll just come up with something like 10. We'll make it a square to start with. Later on, I'll put smart, oh, wait a minute, 1,000. This is me uh, initializing the variables here, not drawing the screen. So it's supposed to be 1,000, and it's supposed to be 10. So in this loop, we say tile zw equals 0 for sky, tile a, zw equals, what do we got? This is 0, 0. And we have 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 3, 1 is just blue. So we'll just do that. 3 and tile B. Can't type today. Equals 1. Uh, and then I'm going to call the draw screen once form is done loading. Right now that does nothing, so if I run the program, nothing happens. But draw screen here is going to say 4z equals 1, 2. I'm not. I'm not going to say all thousand. We don't want to draw a thousand uh, columns of stuff right now. Um, later, I'm going to make this code smart so that it only draws what will fit on the screen. Let's say the screen is really tiny, and you can actually only fit five by five tiles on the screen. We don't need to draw one through ten and one through ten. That's just wasting time because even though you can't see them, it's still taking time for the computer to try to draw it, even though you can't see it. So I'll, I'll make this smart later, but we'll get there. Calls draw tile. Now for draw tile, we say picture one dot paint picture. We're pulling from picture two's image. That's this one. Um, hopefully the audio is not off too much because it's confusing when I move windows and point at things when the audio and the video are not synced up. But I can't do anything about that other than save the video every nine or ten minutes and. Hope it hasn't gotten too bad at the end. We're going to draw it at z minus 1 times 40, I think. Let me figure out how big I made these things. I don't even remember how many pixels. It's not the same as the Pac-Man game. 40 by 40. Yes, it said, it said down here at the bottom. All right, so 40 by 40 is the size of our pixels. Times 40. Um, so this, of course, is where you'll be changing it if you while making your own if you change the size of your sprites. I do not suggest you do that until you've at least gone through it once. Um, unless you already kind of have an idea of how to do this kind of stuff. Um, let's see. We're pulling from the destination tile A times 40 and tile B. And then the width and the height are also 40. Leave off the last one. Remember that's for transparencies. Oops. This is supposed to say call at the beginning. So, I, yep, big old block of blue. And if you see this white border here, that's because I told it only to draw 10 by 10, and we technically needed a few more row or columns here and a few more rows down here in order to actually fill in that space. But we'll make it smart later on. You know, hey, we'll make it smart here. Uh, I'm gonna forget later, so might as well do it while I'm thinking about it, right? So we're going to say not 10, because this is how many it should it draw across. We're going to say picture one dot width divided by 40. Um, the integer value of it, so that if this division here ends up being like 11.3, it's going to knock it down to 11. Because the integer, when you say int, it's just going to cut the decimal right off. And I'm going to say plus one. Just to be safe, it'll always grab one more. Um, cut this code here. For the height, I do hear my alarm going off, so I'm going to have to stop it in a second. But if I do this, subscript out of range, what's it passing here? One and oh, 11. We'll always do 10 for, for width. I forgot, I specifically said it was only going to be 10, 10 tiles tall because I want it to fit. So we already know it'll fit with 10. So I run it, and it has drawn all the way to the edge. That just means I need to make the picture box a little bit smaller. And that's easy enough to do if it's 40 pixels. Or 40, uh, 40 pixels tall times 10, we should have under height 
400. Run it, we're good. Now let me save the video because it's going off and it's driving me crazy. <laughs>